Hi, this is Steve with Knee Family Lights. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to do something a little different. I just received in the mail a package from David Pitts at pixelcontroller.com and in here has the new Falcon F16 V4 that will do a quick unboxing. Before that, I do want to say that yesterday, James Martin and I co-hosted the Mid-Atlantic Animated Lighting Group Mini Convention in Northern Virginia. And we did that at the Vine Lights uh, location, which is the home of probably the finest light show by a church in Virginia, uh, in, in uh, near Tyson's Corner. So many thanks to Vine Church for allowing us to host the mini there, and also to the many sponsors who donated gifts as raffle prizes, and to the speakers, and to the many attendees who traveled, some local but some much farther away, uh, to, to come and share their experiences and get to meet people in the area in the hobby. At this point in the year, most of you, if you're doing a show, are probably very busy working on building everything and doing sequencing. So as you get ready for Halloween and Christmas, I wish you the best. It's a lot of work, keep it up, and you and your community will love it. So let's take a look at this box. Here we go. This box open here. And there it is. Nicely wrapped in the cellophane. Oh, it's got padding on both sides and a ESD bag to keep it protected. This bag is not heat shrink sealed. And I do believe David checks all of these controllers before he then ships them out to everyone around the country. There it is, I will take off that piece of foam that's protecting it from shipping. And the uh, V3 is white. And as you can see now, the V4s are all blue. Looks really nice. Can't wait to uh, get this fired up. Now, this is gonna be a backup to the three controllers that are used between my home show and the Vine Light show. And if you're in the Northern Virginia area and you have an emergency, you know how to get in touch with. All right, that is it. It says uh, F16 V4 version 1.00, designed by David Pitts and Keith Wesley. So thank you, Keith Wesley, as well, for contributing to the development of this board. What also comes in the packaging with the board is uh, 16 Euro plugs with the four pin connectors. So you can connect your pigtails to these and they will connect to the 16 Euro connectors down here. So here we are looking at uh, both boards. I've got my F16 V3 version 1.0 here at the bottom and the new F16 V4 version 1.0 right above. So we've got the white board and the blue board. The OLED screen seems to be in the exact same place. The buttons here for interface control when you're using the menus here are exactly the same. There's four buttons here with a uh, test boot above, and they look like to be labeled exactly the same on the V3. The Wi-Fi chip, which I don't use, uh, is also here. It's a different chip, but it's also Wi-Fi is located up here in the corner. Um, we have an ETH0 and ETH1 labeled that way on the V3. On the V4, it's just labeled network and network. David Pitts did say that on the V3, these are 10100 interfaces. And that also on the V4, it's also 10100. These are not gigabit ports for the switches up here. One thing that is different is it's got a dedicated expansion one and expansion two up here. Whereas on the V3, there's a single ribbon cable here that goes to an expansion and then that board goes to yet another expansion. So if you've got a V4 and you're planning to use it with an existing expansion board, that is not going to work. So. As I mentioned earlier, I was hoping that this would be a backup to my other uh, V3s, so it probably won't be. I'm gonna have to get a different expansion board. I think the differential receiver boards versus smart boards should work, but I'll have to double check that. But if I'm gonna use this um, and, and replace an existing V3, I'm gonna need to get new expansion boards. The nice thing is it looks like each expansion board can be interfaced directly from the Falcon V4 versus chaining them from the V3 version. Looking at these other expansion ports, these are Shielded Cat 
uh, interfaces, but they're not CAT. It's for um, either receiver one, receiver two, and it says DMX. It's really nicely marked here on the board. This one has the same as well. I think it's very similar as far as capability. And that there's um, jumper pins here on the bottom. I think the V3 could only support one receiver board and it looks like the V4 can support two smart receiver outputs. There's a USB interface that's here on the V3. Looks like that's removed on the V4. The micro SD interface on the V3 is right here at the top. and looks like it's been relocated over to this area over here. The power selection to power up the board, which is over here on the right. On the V3, it's a jumper um, pin setup. And on the V4, it's just a switch. I think on some of the newer V3s, uh, the switch was already added. I just have the 1.0 version, so I can't compare it to other updates of the uh, V3. Another small change is if you're doing an external power for the board, looks like these are the Euro connector plugs um, on the V4, whereas on the three, V3, it was a screw terminal. As far as the input power, it also was a jumper, and this showing right here, jumpers for five volts or 12 volts. And on the V4, it's a switch. This might have also been an update on newer versions of the V3, but I don't have one of those to compare. I'm gonna remove this uh, expansion cable here so you can see some other differences between the two. Move that over. So the fan interface for the V3 is sitting right here and the fan interface for the V4 is now re relocated up to the top where the uh, USB port used to be. If you look at the uh, processor, this is an ARM processor. It's much bigger than the original over here. This, there's two, two chips that are now, looks like, integrated into a single chip. As far as mounting the board, it looks like the through holes for screws and offsets are in the exact same location. One up there, one right there one between the input power and the output 16, and also on this side of the output 16. And because the physical dimensions looks exactly to be the same, I bet that these holes are also in the exact same places where your V3 would be. So if you wanted to completely upgrade from a V3 to a V4 system, uh, you could do that just by uh, using the exact same screws. And one last thing I wanted to note is the uh, V3 comes shipped with these resistor banks. These resistor banks uh, comprise of 100 ohm output driving resistors. And I'm gonna flip this around. These are really much easier to see. But on the resistor banks, which are running across here, it says B330J. And these are supposed to be 33 ohms in these resistor banks. So these would be uh, matched to the pixels for your WS2811 pixels. So you'll get really good driving distances. This is the same uh, resist resistance output that are in the F amps. So you won't need to put an F-amp coming out of the output of one of these. It's probably not going to help you at all. Um, but you should get some really good driving distance on your pixel data runs going to your first pixels. I couldn't resist the temptation to get the voltmeter out. So here we are. I'm going to very carefully lift out the resistor network. So on this side, it's all black. And then on this side, it has the lettering for 33 ohms. And we will test it out. There it is, 32.6 on the first resistor. If I can hold it straight. 32.3. So yeah, a whole new resistor set. 32.4. So that about wraps up this video unboxing the brand new F16 V4 version 1.0 by David Pitts and Keith Wesley. And as we tested, these do have the 33 ohm resistor banks. So you know you're gonna have a great data driving output out of this controller without having to change those resistor banks. And you can also, if you saw my video on the power of 33 ohms, you can confidently and safely switch out your resistor banks with um, 33 ohms from the 100 ohms. Till next time, we'll see ya.